Hey YouTube, Jason here. Um, today is the 29th of March. Uh, going to do our final boil for the year of the 2017 maple season. Um, first year running my homemade evaporator. I uh, learned a little bit on the way. We're going to try something new again today from suggest suggestions from you guys. Um, last night I was looking at the cap and stuff. Had a rain cap on top of my stack and it was all creosoted up and Sunday it wasn't boiling real well and I couldn't figure out why well when I pulled my pipes apart last night they were they were pretty full so I pulled them all apart took the elbows out took my roof off my shack and ran it straight up let's find out what it does today all right so the fire's been going for about 15 20 minutes now as you can see we got steam rolling already if you look up at the stack that's the most smoke I've ever seen come out of that thing so far. It's hard to know if for sure if it was the cap that I had on top that was slowing it down or if it was the elbows. I know a lot of guys say they run elbows in theirs and don't have a problem. I know furnaces you run elbows and you don't have a problem. Maybe an evaporator you can't. All I know is that fire is roaring through there. I've had to fill it twice since I started it up already. And the back pan is already coming to a boil and it's only been 20 minutes. Well, hopefully that's a successful thing and maybe this 30 gallons will only take me an hour and a half, two hours instead of six hours to do. We'll find out. All right, everyone, we are about two hours into this uh, final boil of the 2017 season. As you can see, there's not much of the 30 gallons left we started off with. Got to say that this thing has been running incredible today. This is the fastest it's cooked down. Um, took you guys' suggestions, took the elbows out, put the stack straight in the air, put it about two feet higher, and I took the rain cap off of it. Can't wait until next year, get the fire brick in this thing and see what it really does. I tell you, I'm standing about three feet away from it right now and it is hot. It is very hot. It is losing a lot of heat through the sides of this thing. So I'm hoping that once I contain that heat inside, it'll run even better. So once we get done, we're going to be emptying the rear pan into the front one here pretty soon. Throw some water in that rear pan so we don't scorch it. And once we get down to maybe two gallons in that front pan, we'll draw it off into our stainless pot and we will finish it on the propane. See if I can get a little video of that going on once we get to that point. Alright everybody, so we've got it cooked down to about three gallons. And we're going to finish it over propane now. Uh, I use my pre-warmer pan, kind of doubled up the use of that this year as my finishing pan as well. Um, take an hour, two hours probably to get this cooked down to syrup. Um, I use a hydrometer, float, do the float test of a hydrometer when I finish mine off. That's how I know when I get to syrup. Um, we'll get her cooked down here and I'll show you my filtering and bottling setup I got and get you a shot here of the finished product for the year how much we got so this here is my uh, filtering bottling setup as you can see there's a spout at the bottom for filling the bottles uh, where the plug is that's made for a temperature gauge but I haven't gotten one in it yet I just got a digital thermometer I put in there and watch temperature and down inside it's got four hooks that hold the cone Orlon filter and then I got three pre filters in there you just dump her in let her run through then I put it on the over the propane burner a real low heat bring it up to bottling temperature and fill the bottles and we're done stick around we'll get to that here in a little while all right so we are just about done here I don't know how well you can see it the bubbles are getting real nice and tiny, and we're not 
not going to be able to focus on that, but we are floating at about 52 bricks right now. We have to get up to 59 on the hot test to be maple syrup. A couple more minutes, we'll be there. All right, so we got our hot maple syrup going through the filters right now. You can kind of hear it trickling through. Uh, in a couple minutes here, we'll pull out this first pre-filter. We'll dump that into the next one, and it should all go through after that. Uh, and we'll get her up on the heat, get the lid on it, and get to bottling. All right, so now I've brought this up to 200 degrees with my candy thermometer. And all you simply do, the bottles are going to get hot, so you put a glove on. Just start filling the bottle. Once you get it up to this ring here, that's where you want to stop filling, put your cover on. You lay it down on its side, fill your next bottle. When you get to your second bottle after filling your first one, then you want to stand up your first one, and so on and so forth. Uh, this process is called hot packing. It's what you want to do because it sterilizes the bottle, sterilizes the cap, seals it. This being our last run, I'm going to get some pictures here when we're all done of how much we've got in total this year. Pretty much that's the whole process of bottling. That's all you need to do. Alright everyone, so what we got here is our year end total. Comes out to seven and a half gallons. Cooked down roughly 350, 360 gallons of sap to get to this point here. We've got three gallons worth of quartz. We got four and a half gallons of pints. All in all, for the crummy year we've had, I think it's pretty good. Now you probably can see it a little bit, but like you can see, we got light and we got dark. As we go down the line here, the lighter bottles are actually early stuff that we made. And as the season progresses, it gets darker. Well, guys, I had a lot of fun making this uh, series here. It's been a hectic five weeks. Um, as always, if you thought the videos were fun to watch, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do it now. We'll catch you in the next video.